Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for hanging around. I know I'm almost between you and a large dinner, so I, I will promise not to ruin your experience this evening. Um, I picked this topic, uh, you know, let's face it, it's sexy, it'll get me on the podium, I thought, and, you know, here I am. But it really, I want to tell you a little about myself. I'm a tortured soul. Every time I go out with a group of friends, everybody's, you know, staring over my plate, seeing what I'm eating. And most of the discussion in the evening relates to, should I eat chicken or fish? Are all carbs bad? You know, should I go on the South Beach diet? And what supplements do I take? And I'm exhausted. All I want to do is enjoy a good meal. But it turns out I'm unable to answer any of those questions that, at that rate. You have to know about somebody before you start talking to them about their diet. So what I'm going to take you through in the next few minutes is the series of things that I go through in my mind before I answer any of those questions to anybody. So first of all, I'll give you an overview of sort of the thinking of how I think about diet. Um, medical management comes first, excess body fat, and then I get to nutrition. And both food and dietary supplements are of importance. And again, remember the theme is what makes you live longer. Uh, lastly, talk about exercise and then sum it up. So in the big picture, when people want to know whether they should eat that pork chop or not, I can't, I can't answer it. I don't know what's wrong with them, how frequently they see the physician, have they been screened for standard treatments. I don't know anything. That's like the major thing. And, and obviously, you know from your patients, they may come see you, but they may blow off in, uh, any medicines that you give them or any other therapies. People aren't really compliant. So if you don't get your base or your host, if you will, organized, you're never, ever going to be able to answer the question about diet because you might as well just eat at Burger King if you don't take care of yourself. The next thing is this business of excess body fat. And I um, certainly would like to thank the previous two speakers who have brought this up and over and over again. It can't go away. Excess body fat has a huge impact on the way the body performs and your ability to live a long life. Then we come to the rest of the pyramid, if you will, looking at food and supplements. Yes, there is modulation you can do with these things, but it's, it's underwhelmed and dwarfed by the impact of medical management and uh, body fat. And then lastly, I have to say something about exercise, certainly from two speakers ago and just because it's in most of your practices. So yearly medical management, I, I can't stress enough, because if you, if you can't take care of somebody, um, how can you expect everything else to fall into play? And I'm going to call out some things on here that you may think are sort of strange, but you'll understand in the next couple of slides. Certainly smoking, mental health, and stress you'll see coming up. Preventive disease um, screening, and then um, anything else that they're using. It's very important to tease that out besides their medications, what other alternative therapies are being used. And then certainly serial measurements of height and weight and waist circumference I'll also cover. Now, I get interested in um, telomere biology. I don't, I don't know anything about genetics. I'm too old. I got out of my doctorate before this stuff was invented. But um, it's, it's so fascinating to me because despite whatever condition anybody has, the telomeres tell it all because when they're cut to such a critical mass, uh, they're just a long chain in your DNA, and when they get too short, that's the end of the cell, and essentially you're on the way to an early demise. So you can, you can arrest the shortening of telomeres because everybody in this room, their telomeres are shortening while you're all listening to me, but some are going at a fast clip and some are going actually quite slowly. So if you want to um, uh, speed things up, you can have a lot of free radical damage. So if you live in Manhattan, you're breathing a lot of pollutants, you're speeding things up. But you can do it from within. Disease processes, excess body fat, and any sort of stress or depression you have in your life. How do you slow everything down? Well, you can get rid of all this nonsense on the side, get healthier, and get rid of your body fat. But there's also foods that are nutrient-dense and some dietary supplements that may slow this process of real aging. So look at telomeric aging just um, on a 39,000-foot level. I called through, you know, 40 articles that I was reading on this. But looking at life expectancy, how much you're shortened by doing certain things in your life. The, the stress of caregiving was phenomenally up on top. Um, 
I, I watch my own father get frail taking care of my mother with Alzheimer's. I know, fam and then there's other families with children that are, have um, uh, either physical or mental uh, uh, dysfunctions that takes years off your life. Being depressed also is right up there with having a problem. But a lot of these things can be addressed. Um, you can't make the child or the patient go away, but you can help out with support systems, help out with uh, things for depression. Lack of uh, exercise and leisure time, which you heard about, it's not only the exercise where you go to the gym and hate yourself when you're done, it's the kind where you're moving around your body and having some time to relax. Smoking um, takes off about seven and a half years, and you'll notice that obesity is uh, right there with the same. So, you know, my joke is, well, maybe you can start, start smoking, you'll lose some of the body fat, and you'll only be at seven and a half years, but that's not a good answer. So. Um, osteoporosis also, and certainly uh, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and rheumatoid arthritis, all inflammatory processes, are shortening these telomeres every minute of every day. So hence, number one on the scale is you, you have to seek medical management and get control of some of these factors. Now, the second thing, before you can even talk about diet, is this business of body fat. And you've all heard it, and you're going to hear it tomorrow. I looked in the brochure, and you've probably already heard about it. So I'm, I, I'm not going to go too overboard here, but I just want to make a couple of points. I, every time I bring up BMI to anybody, even if I'm in academic groups or with my friends or whatever, I get wrestled to the ground because somebody knows a tight end for the New England Patriots that isn't fat. And you know what? I don't care. These data are based on normal people that have regular lives, which comprises 99% of the population living in America. So y you can't blow off these data, and you can't get wrestled down by your patients who will find something on the Internet that says these data aren't valid. They are valid. They've been, you know, systematically reviewed each year. So I'm going to show you a couple, two new studies. Um, this was 06, and I'll show you new ones. Um, looking in, in the United States at, at the impact of being overweight on aging. So they started it, um, they had a group, and they looked at their BMI at age 50, followed them for uh, 20 years, and looked what happened, that the increased risk of um, obesity, if you're obese, you have a two to three times higher risk of dying at any of the age groups. And overweight, it's a 20 to 40 percent increase. So the obesity was so strongly related to the cause of death, and it transcended everybody, men and women, all racial and ethnic groups. It is just non-negotiable. This was a U.S. study done here, and it's just really and really important, and it, and it relates to how much excess body fat you indeed have. Now, the thing about weight loss is you don't need a full court press. You do not have to, you know, go on the Jenny Craig diet and, and torture yourself, lose 40 pounds and then regain it. A little's a lot, and the body doesn't like to be tortured. It just likes a little bit of weight loss.